Good evening, guys. Good evening, guys. We are here in our YouTube channel and we will be going to discuss the common diseases we might uh, encounter in hospital. We have various types of diseases, but we will just discuss the most common one. So what are the risk factors? What are the signs and symptoms? What are the managements? What are our nursing role or nursing considerations related to this diseases? So let's start. So let's start with cancer. Cancer, it is an abnormal growth of cells which tend to proliferate in an uncontrolled way and in some cases to metastasize or spread, okay? Cancer is always related to tumor. What is tumor, guys? As we remember that the basic unit of life is cell, okay? Our, as an organism, we are composed of groups of cells, okay? And these groups of cells uh, during cancer, there will be an abnormal growth of tissue or cells in our body. There is a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, causes or risk factors why we are developing this abnormal growth of tissue or cells. So tumor, it is simply an abnormal growth of tissue or cells. So what is metastasis? If you are hearing this word, you always remember that metastasis is always the spread of cancer to other parts of the body. So if you have metastasis, it means that your tumor is cancerous. Your tumor is not benign. Okay, so what are those terms that I'm talking about? Let's go with the types of tumor. Tumor have two types, guys. You have the first one, benign tumor. Benign tumor, guys, the first thing that you need to remember is it doesn't spread to the other parts of the body. It doesn't spread to the other parts of the body. They can grow to a large size but rarely threaten life. They usually do not grow back when removed. Okay, that is the benign benign one then if you have malignant okay if benign is not spreading to other parts of the body the the reverse of it or the opposite of it is malignant malignant guys it invades and destroy nearby tissues they can spread to the other body parts and it is usually life threatening sometimes they grow back after removal that is the two types of tumor. Guys, you always remember, and it's very easy to remember, the signs and symptoms of, tum uh, of cancer. Though you always remember the acronym CAUTION. So what CAUTION means? CAUTION means C for change in bowel and bladder habits. So what common type of cancer is related to change in bowel and bladder habits? Usually, it is cancer of the colon or cancer of the bladder. Next, a sore that doesn't heal. A sore that doesn't heal, it is mostly related to skin cancer. Next is unusual bleeding or discharge. Unusual bleeding or discharge, guys, is always related to those cancer which affects your reproductive system, which are uh, endometrial cancer and cervical cancer. Other is T, for thickening of lump in the breast of elsewhere. Obviously, it is the cancer of the breast. So uh, what is the best time to do self-breast examination or assessment? The best time, guys, to do self-breast examination is when, uh, before, and before or after our monthly period. Okay, why? Because if we do self-breast examination during our period, it is normally, it is normal that you will feel a lump on your breast during your menstruation. So to prevent a false positive assessment or examination to your breast, you should do it 
before or after your menstruation. Then indigestion or difficulty in swallowing. So all cancer related to your digestive organ or uh, digestive organ or rep respiratory system like laryngeal cancer, esophageal cancer, um, gastric cancer. This is uh, really, uh, one of the signs and symptoms is indigestion or difficulty in swallowing. Next signs and symptoms, guys, is obvious change in wart and mole. If you see your wart, guys, okay, the, the size is getting bigger, okay, getting bigger. It's not constant. The size is not constant. It's getting bigger. Obviously, you should check it because maybe it is a sign of cancer. Maybe it's a skin cancer, signs and symptoms of skin cancer. And lastly is nagging cough or hoarseness. Nagging cough or hoarseness is always related to respiratory system cancer like lung cancer. So these are the signs and symptoms of cancer. So what are the contributing factors related to cancer? First, you have the growing age. A person who is aged, okay, compared to the younger generations or younger people, they are more prone to not only cancer but any diseases. Then tobacco, then sunlight, ionizing radiation, some viruses and bacteria. Do you know that human papilloma virus, okay, which is uh, related to your endometrial cancer and cervical cancer, those are, those are viruses that can contribute for the development of those type of cancers. So infections, viral infections and bacterial infections, it can contribute to cancer, guys. Remember that. Then you have certain hormones, history of cancer, family history of cancers. Of course, it is hereditary. Cancer is hereditary. That's why if you have a relative or mother or father who had cancer before, please check at, as you age 40 above, please check uh, your uh, health because maybe you might got the cancer or you might inherit the cancer. So you, you need to have an annual checkup. Then alcohol, poor diet, and lack of physical activities and being obese. Then you have management. So what are the types of managements that we are doing to the patient? We are not, uh, we are not, uh, we will not be mentioning those specific medication specific treatments for us for cancer but uh, we will just overview all of these managements so first is surgery surgery it is uh, a management to remove the cancerous part of the body okay one type of surgical management that we are doing is mastectomy guys what is mastectomy? Mastectomy, guys, is uh, removing part of the breast, uh, uh, removing your breast. It can be partial or it can be total. When we are removing the part of the breast only, it's called partial mastectomy. If we are removing all the, the overall breast, it's called total mastectomy. But guys, what is our nursing role if there is a patient who had undergone mastectomy. What is our nursing assistant role? So first is, first and foremost, we should not get vital signs, specifically blood pressure on the affected side. If the mastectomy is done to the left side, don't get blood pressure on that side. Then you need to uh, make sure that there, there is no blood extraction being done on the affected side or the left arm. Then make sure, ensure that uh, there, uh, there's no pressure being applied on the affected side. What's the reason, guys, why we are preventing 
what what's the reason why we are preventing or not doing any activities or putting pressure on the affected side it is because we i will just write it down we want to prevent a certain type of condition which is called lymph edema okay so lymph edema it is a condition wherein the the affected arms okay uh, affected arms or the affected limb okay is being swollen like the elephant's leg elephant's leg so if it happens to your patient, make sure to elevate the limb, okay, two to three pillows, so the blood supply will go back to the heart and it will subside the swelling. So that is lymph edema. Then you have radiotherapy so another management guys is radiotherapy so what are the things that we need to remember or what are the side effects side effects of uh, radiotherapy so number one is nausea and vomiting so what is your nursing responsibility if your patient is having nausea and vomiting? First is you should offer ice chips. Okay, Why we are offering ice chips to the patients? It's because ice chips will decrease or ease the nausea and vomiting. It's not being offered. It's not only offered to those patients who have vomiting due to uh, radiation therapy, but also it is offered to pregnant women, okay? So that is our nursing responsibility, offer ice chips. Without asking the nursing, uh, the nurse in charge or doctor, we can do this because it is dependent intervention. Sorry, I mean, it is independent intervention. We can do it without being told by others. Next is offer small frequent okay offer small frequent feeding guys make sure that we are not giving the patient a full meal what will happen if you will give the patient full meal he will vomit more or she will vomit more so make sure you offer a small but frequent feeding okay so but uh, most of the time we are offering chips very effective chips don't offer oily foods or full meal it's not uh, it will cause it will aggregate more the problem but giving small frequent feeding it is most effective next so next is you have chemotherapy so another treatment is chemotherapy so chemotherapy uh, sorry uh, another side effects of uh radiation guys is mucositis mucositis and stomatitis so what is mucositis and stomatitis uh that is the inflammation of the mucosal membrane okay what will happen and uh there will be a small lump or 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 sore in the mouth uh, that it's very painful, that the patient cannot eat. So to prevent the it, as, ner as a nursing assistant, you can offer a good oral hygiene, okay? Guys, avoid those highly concentrated toothpaste, okay? Uh, offer only the light one. Salt and water or uh, warm salt and water, it is very effective for this. So that are the most common side effects of radiation therapy. 
Next is chemotherapy. So for chemotherapy, guys, same with radiation therapy, there can have there is also nausea and vomiting, as side effects, and mucositis and stomatitis. Chemotherapy, guys, is giving or administration of chemotherapeutic agents. Chemotherapeutic agents, by the way, can kill the cancerous cells, okay? But it can also affect the normal cells. That's why if you are taking chemotherapeutic agent, okay, the first, the first uh, affected part is your hair. Why? Because your hair is fast growing and it is a type of an organ, okay, a type of, uh, uh, it, it composed of cell. So what will happen, it will affect, not only affect, uh, chemotherapeutic agent will not affect only the uh, cancerous cell, but also the normal cell. So, an, so one of it is the hair, okay? That's why most of the patients who have chemotherapy is bald. So what you can do to prevent uh, being uh, depressed, most of the patients are depressed because they don't have hair. So uh, they, they can offer wig for the patient. So that is for chemotherapy. Then what else? Uh, chemotherapy can also cause uh, suppress immune system. Guys, it can su suppress immune system. It can make the immune system down. Okay, if your immune system is down, guys, you can be easily infected. So if someone visited you with cough and cold, guys, you will get the infection and it will be more serious to you. Okay, that's why visitors is restricted for those patients with chemotherapy because that small infection can be very serious for them and it can kill them, guys. So that is one side effect or adverse effect of chemotherapy. It is not allowed also for patients who is undergoing chemotherapy to be given or uh, to be yeah to be to be given with fresh fruits and uh, what's this fresh fruits and flowers because these items or these foods or items contains microorganisms and if these microorganisms go inside the body of the patient it can cause a serious infection that's why it's not allowed to be given to those type of patients so that is chemotherapy then you have palliative care and supportive care so guys for palliative care and supportive care if you have terminal stage cancer it means that your cancer cannot be treated Okay, cannot be cured. It is end stage already. You are just waiting to uh, waiting for your time, waiting for your time to die. So palliative care is given to the patient. Palliative care is given to the patient who have terminal illness. What is the main main uh, priority of palliative care is to make to ensure comfort to ensure comfort of the patient uh, how to make sure to ensure the comfort of the patient first is to assist the patient in his uh, ADLs okay activities of daily living then assist your patient to uh, assist your patient to daily living and kind okay, of guys Mm, so how to ensure the comfort of the patient as i've told you you should make sure uh, to assist the patient in activities of daily living like eating toileting mm, also ensure that the pain is controlled okay those patients who have cancer is always in pain. That's why most of them are irritable because they are always feeling pain. That's why normal 
analgesic or painkiller is not given to them uh, like paracetamol and ibuprofen because it will not affect to them because they have severe pain so what they are giving to those patients is they are giving morphine oxycodone the higher concentration of uh, pan, uh, analgesic or painkiller so that is management of cancer now let's go with the other musculoskeletal disorder. So we have here arthritis. Wait a minute. So guys, you have arthritis. So what is arthritis? Art means if you remember the medical abbreviations and terms, uh, art means joint and itis means inflammation. So if you combine that two, you can make or you can create arthritis so arthritis means joint inflammation guys you have three types of arthritis you have osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis and you have gouty arthritis uh, osteoarthritis guys it is a type of degenerative joint disease mostly common to those elderly population to elderly population so uh, the cartilage that covers the ends of the bones wears away, making the movement of the joint difficult and painful. So if you notice here, guys, okay, if you notice the normal cell is this one, okay? Normal cell is this one or normal joint is this one. You notice that the joint is with, with a synovial fluid synovial fluid will ensure that it will have an articulation or lubricant on each uh, on the joint so uh, there will be so this will be the normal joint okay so there will be an ease when the joint is being bent so if you notice if the joint is if you notice if the joint has no fluid okay it will be uh causing friction to each other the bone will be uh touching the other bones and it will be uh it will be causing severe uh pain to the patient so that uh, this is the osteoarthritis. So it's very painful. Then. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the osteoarthritis. Commonly, the weight-bearing joints are being affected by osteoarthritis, such as the knees, okay, the hips, the joints of the spinal column. It is also affecting the obese patients. Obese patients, their 
uh, especially their hips, they cannot handle the weight of the upper bodies. So what will happen, bo uh, the joint will be affected. Next type of arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is usually cause of autoimmune disorders or autoimmune process. Autoimmune process means your own cell is attacking your own cells. Okay, so what happened to the rheumatoid arthritis? As you can see here, So you can see here, guys, there is an inflammation. Why? Because the cell or the WBC attacks the tissues or the joint. Okay. What happened to the joint when they attack? It becomes swollen. Okay. And it will cause arthritis. So this is called the rheumatoid arthritis. Then you have. You have the you have the gouty arthritis. For gouty arthritis, most it is caused by your for the build up for the build up of uric acid. If you are if you love to eat uric uh, foods containing uh, uric acid like beans like uh, beans, sardines, fish. So it contains uric acid and it will build up to your joints and might cause gouty arthritis. So if you will see here on the right side, there is build up of uric acid. It's like a, a stone or a rock salt okay build up together in the joint and it is painful see so this is the the rheumato uh, the the osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis and the uric acid or gouty arthritis so what are the risk factors for the arthritis you have the family history and age. Previous joint injury and obesity. So those are the causative factor or the risk factor. Then what are the signs and symptoms of osteoarthritis? You have the pain, of course. If your joint is being affected, okay, it will cause severe pain. There is also stiffness because why there is stiffness? Because you cannot bend without your. Uh, if your joint is being affected, you cannot bend your knees or you cannot bend your bones because the joint is the one who is who who allowed you to uh, to bend your body parts. Then there is a swelling redness and there is decrease in range of motion so what are the treatments for this you have rest balance with exercise okay don't do exercise or range of motion exercise if you are feeling severe pain if you have arthritis proper positioning you have to control your weight you need to reduce your stress measure to prevent fall as i've told you guys fall is is a mortal sin in the hospital or facility. Why? Because if someone fall or patients fall, it is a gross negligence. We should not allow our patients to fall because we should always observe or monitor our patients. So for those patients who have arthritis, they are at risk of fall because the affected part is musculoskeletal system, their bones, their bones. So they are at risk of fall. Then you need to give them a pain relief. Okay, why? Because there is always pain related to 
uh, arthritis and alternate heat and cold applications to reduce inflammation and uh, joint replacement surgery. You can replace the joint okay, by doing a surgical intervention with it, which is called arthroplasty. Then, let's go to fracture. So fracture, guys, very easy. It is a broken bone. Okay? Broken bone. Bone. Usually caused by trauma such as fall or car accident. Most of the fall is caused by motor vehicular accident. So we have different types of fracture. You have the closed fracture, you have the open fracture, green stick fracture, you have impacted fracture, you have comminuted fracture, and you have spiral fracture. So you will see in the picture how it differs from, uh, from one another. So for closed fracture and open fracture, Close fracture, guys, there is a broken bone, okay, but the bone uh, doesn't go outside the skin. It doesn't make a wound. That is close fracture. However, open fracture, guys, there is a fracture, then the bone go outside of the skin. Green stick fracture is there is a part of the bone, okay, partial fracture, partially fractured. And then impacted fracture is there is a total fracture of the bones. Then comminuted fracture, there is a small particles, okay, or breakage of the bones. And lastly, you have the spiral fracture. Spiral fracture is there is an oblique or spiral shape uh, fracture of the bones. So these are the types of fractures. So let's go to the treatments of fracture. For the treatments of fracture, guys, you have the reduction and in, uh, reduction and fixation. When we're talking about reduction, it is a process of bringing the bones ends into alignment. The broken bones ends into alignment. So usually it is used to describe the process. Fixation is it holding the bone in one position until fracture heals. So guys, we have different types of it. You have the open reduction. Open reduction necessarily, it surgically exposed the bone to line up the broken ends of the bone. So they will do a certain procedure or surgery. They will open the skin, okay, expose the bone, put metals on it or screws metals on it to align the bone. Okay, if you will see in the picture here at the down part, right side down part okay in the x-ray they they put a screws metals okay to align the bone so if you're talking about close reduction close reduction is the doctors lines up the broken ends of the bone by simply pushing them back into place it means that they can push or pull the bone okay it's very painful Okay, they will just push it or pull it so it will become aligned again. That is close reduction. What? Uh, but you will also hear different uh, procedures like open reduction, internal fixation. So open reduction, internal fixation, you will see here in the down part, Open reduction, internal fixation. Open reduction means they will open and expose the bone and they will put screws in the inside of the bone. Okay, like in this picture on the right lower part. So this is called open reduction, internal fixation. Then they will close the skin again. Then <coughs> we can also have external fixation external fixation means um, they will open the wound and there will be an exposed part okay outside the skin okay visible to the to the eyes you will see a metal 
outside the skin, okay? That is called external fixation. O open reduction in external fixation. So most of the time, external fixation is temporary, okay? It is temporary and internal fixation is, it will take uh, long compared to external fixation. It depends upon what bones is affected. If bigger bones are affected like humerus or femoral fracture or femur, okay, most of the time it will take time. And for those small fractures like clavicle, okay, clavicle is, it will heal like two to six weeks. Then they will remove the metals and screws again. So that is treatment one uh, first treatment reduction and fixation second one is traction okay so for traction guys we have two types traction is the end of the bones are placed in the proper position align it and then the weight is applied to exert on the constant foot constant pull and keep the body in alignment you will see in the picture that at the end of the uh, traction okay you will see a weight okay this weight will allow to to pull the bone so it will be aligned again so this is traction you have two types of traction guys you have the skin traction and you have the skeletal traction for skin traction the device is attached so it is in the top part this is the skeletal traction uh skin traction skin traction they are putting a device okay like something like a foam there okay on the skin then uh, at the end of it there will be a weight okay that is called skin traction if you're Telling about, if you're talking about skeletal traction, skeletal traction, they are putting pins on the bone itself. They will do operation on the bones itself. Then they will pull it by using the weight. Okay, so the lower part, it is example of skeletal traction. There is also skeletal traction, which is mostly uh, common for fracture of the hip. Okay, that is called balanced skeletal traction traction then you have another type of treatment with this which is the cast cast it is made up of plaster of paris plastic or fiberglass so this type of treatment okay the first one the common type of cast is the white one okay it is called plaster of paris then the colored one, which is the blue one, green one, or there is also red one, orange one. This is called the fiberglass. Okay, cast is like a cement. If you put it in a part of the body, it will become strengthened and it will become uh, hard, okay, to help your bone to be back or aligned again. But guys, you should be careful uh in handling patients with gas because the, there might be a complication if you will not handle it with care not only the gas but also the traction uh, and also the open reduction and internal fixation treatment or the surgical part okay so these three if you will not take care okay there will be the so-called neurovascular deficit okay later i'll tell you what is this so for cast care, guys, do not cover the cast or else it will be uh, uh, or place it on a plastic covered pillow until it has been dried. Why? Because it will stick on in it and it will be difficult to remove. Do not touch the cast with your fingertips unless it is totally dry. OK, why it will stick to your. Uh, to your hands. Then if you are holding it, you should make sure that you hold it with two hands, not only one hand. Why? Because you will misalign it. Uh, the, the function of the cast is it, it uh, functions as to align the bones together. Okay. So you should handle it with two hands. Okay. Like this. So to prevent it to become misaligned. Then keep the cast body part elevated. For those uh, affected part with the cast, you should 
elevate it with two pillows. What's the rationale to, pro to uh, decrease the swelling? Then because the skin underneath the cast can start to itch the person, okay, if there is an itchiness, of course, normally there will be an itchiness inside the cast. Why? Because there will be a moisture, itchiness, irritation. So tell the patient that it is not allowed to scratch it with any items. Why? It's, it's difficult to remove it back because it is cemented. Then make sure that the person toes are pink, warm, and vein. So this is the one I'm telling you guys. We should prevent the neurovascular deficit. You should always maintain neurovascular. Should be intact, okay? Neurovascular should be intact, okay? So what are, are those neurovascular? What are the things that under neurovascular? Those are the temperature, okay? Temperature, it should be pink. Your capillary, okay? For example, you have this uh, cast here on the leg. So you should check the capillary refill of the nail beds. It should be pink. Then you should also check the pulse, okay? If the pulse is, uh, you can assess the pulse, okay? The pedal pulse or the uh, dorsalis pedis pulse, assess it. It should be bounding, okay? It should be, you can palpate it. If you cannot palpate it, if it's very weak, it means might be your cast is so tight, okay? If the capillary refill is slow and it's not pink, like it's dark or cyanosis or bluish in color, it means that the cast is tight. Check also... This is the color. Temperature should be warm. If it's cold, it means that the cast is, is so tight. Okay, the color should be pink. Pulse. Palpable. Pulse is palpable. If you are not seeing all of these categories, okay, the patient can have a certain condition, okay, a condition or the complication of having cast traction and the other treatments that we are calling it as these are the complications. The major complication that you want to prevent is the so-called compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome. Okay, what is compartment syndrome? Compartment syndrome is the feeling or the tightness of the affected part. Okay, if you have cast on the leg, if you have compartment syndrome, it is very tight, okay? The, that part will become very tight and it will cause a uh, neurovascular deficit, okay? So what they will do is they will do an operation. We are calling it as fasciotomy, okay? To open, they will open the, 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 the affected side and make it rest so the tightness will be at ease. So that is fasciotomy. So compartment syndrome, you should always check the color, the temperature, pulse, okay? There is also pain, okay? Severe pain is also another symptoms of compartment syndrome. You should always report it. If you, you found it to your patient, you always report, you should report it to your nurse in charge.
Tun Do not allow a person to place keep pressure or weight until indicated, unless indicated. Then uh, another special uh, care that we should be giving to the patients with hip fracture. Hip fracture, they will always do a procedure, okay? Like they will do operation on the hip, okay, to align the bones. But after that, you should make sure to know what are the care that you should be given to the patients? So first of it is prevent external rotation. What is external rotation? So if this is your leg, okay, it, it, uh, it should not be externally rotated. It means like this, uh, externally outward. So that is externally rotated because it will misalign the surgical part. So to prevent this, you should put a pillow, trochanter rolls, pillows, and sandbags. Then keep the leg adapted. What do you mean by adapted? Abducted, I mean. Abducted means it's not together, okay? Like next to each other, but it should be abducted away, far apart. So make sure that the leg is far apart. How you will do that? You just put a abductor, the so-called abductor pillow, like this picture. So there is abductor pillow. Then prevent external rotation of the hip. Use trochanter loads and keep the legs abducted. So these are the uh, diseases, cancer, and the musculoskeletal system.